Why, hello, it's Miss Gina. So here's some bedtime stories for some older kids, some kids that are into chapter books. This is called Wish Works, and the main character is Max. And he. this is his first day of school. So I'm gonna read you chapter one. This is our first chapter of Magic War, or no, it's Wish Works. I wanna call it Magic. Wish Works Incorporated. And it's illustrated by Amy June Bates and the author of the Surviving the Apple Whites, Stephanie S. Tolan. So Surviving the Apple Whites is another book you might want to get if you like this one. So we're going to dive right in on chapter one. Chapter one. It was Max's second day at his new school. It's not his first day. It's his second day. And this is chapter one. It was also the second day the tall kid with red buzz cut stood in front of him in the hall and blocked the way. I'm going to come closer so maybe you can see the words as I read. And stood in front of him in the hall and blocked the way to his classroom. That doesn't sound nice. Two other boys stood a little behind the buzz cut kid so Max couldn't get around him. Yesterday, Max had tried to push his way past. It hadn't worked. They had shoved him into the wall. The rest of the day, his shoulder hurt. Right now, this minute, if he touched the place, it would still be sore. It wasn't fair. It wasn't fair. He wanted to take them on, but there were three against one. Three against one is not fair. Not at all. And I'm just going to look this way because I think something was falling at me. It didn't get me. I'm okay. I thought those boys might be back there. I was checking. He could dodge around them. Look out! He shouted, pointing over their heads. He's going to get you. Two of them turned to look where he was pointing, but the buzz cut kid wasn't fooled. He snatched Max's lunchbox and ran for the boys' room. He went in the bathroom with his lunch. How rude. When Max started after him, the two others jumped in front of him. Max dodged sideways, and they dodged with him. He dodged the other way, and they did too. He pretended to dodge back, and when they moved to block him again, he got around them. But by the time the buzz cut kid was coming out of the boys' room with an evil grin on his face, his hands were empty. Max found his lunchbox in one of the toilets. He pulled it out and carried it, dripping to the sink, he ran water over his lunchbox and then washed his hands. He wouldn't be able to eat his apple. His sandwich was in a Ziploc bag. Ziplocs were supposed to keep water out. Even so, he knew he couldn't make himself eat the sandwich now. What made him maddest, though, was the butterscotch brownie his mother had let him take. It was the last one. Max had almost eaten it on the school bus. Man, he wished now that he had. He opened his lunchbox and emptied everything, even the brownie, into the trash. Max looked into the mirror over the sink. His unhappy face looked back at him. Only losers and wimps give in to bullies and their henchmen, his dad used to tell him. There had been bullies in his old school, too. You need to stand up for yourself. You need to give as good as you get. <clears throat> Max made a ferocious face in the mirror. <sighs> I am not a loser, he thought. I am not a wimp. He imagined a big reddish-brown dog standing right behind him. The dog wagged his big plume of a tail. Get him, King, Max whispered. King bounded out into the hall and grabbed the buzz cut kid pants leg. 
the buzz cut kid fell to the floor in Max's mind. Only in Max's mind. It didn't happen for real. I think I'm going to trade out my chair. Okay, let's see. It happened in his mind, so he doesn't really have a dog with a big plume of a tail. So, King jumped on the kid and stood with his front feet on his chest. King growled deep, loud, scary growl. Can you growl like you think Max did? For King, <laughs> the buzz cut kid howled. The kid's henchman ran away. Max saw himself walking calmly out of the boys' room and standing over the buzz cut kid. That's enough. He said to the dog, King came to sit beside him, a bit of blue denim between his teeth. The buzz cut kid ran crying down the hall to the third grade classroom. Max wiped his wet hands on his jacket. He patted King's head. No wimps or losers here. None, no. The bell rang. Ring, 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 ring. Max left the boy's room and carried his still dripping lunchbox towards his classroom. He imagined King walking at his side, ears up, tail wagging or waving. Good dog, he whispered. Tomorrow, he would not open his lunchbox on the bus to see what was inside. He would keep it safely in his backpack. Inside the classroom, he put his jacket his backpack, and the wet lunchbox into his cubby and went to his seat. He imagined King lying down next to his feet, head and ears up, keeping watch. When Mr. Malone, the third grade teacher, took the role, Max listened carefully. The buzz cut kid's name was Nick Berger. He sat in the first row right in front of the teacher's desk. It's Burger, B-E-R-G-E-R, -E -E not like Burger King, B-U-R-G-E-R. -E um, that was probably because Mr. Malone wanted to keep an eye on him. Nick's henchmen's names were Lewis and Rocco. One sat in the middle of the room on the right. The other sat in the middle of the on the left. Mr. Malone must know about them. He was keeping them apart. Max was glad that the only seat left when he came to this school had been at the back of the room. He and King would keep an eye on all three of them. All morning, Max stared at the back of Nick Berger's neck and imagined terrible things happening to him. First, there was a red and purple dragon with fiery eyes that swooped down and picked Nick up with his huge claws. The dragon flew over a glowing volcano and dropped Nick in. Then there was a big squinty-eyed man dressed all in black who shoved Nick into a cage and made, that were made of iron bars. He put a heavy chain around the cage and padlock on the chain. But best of all, Max thought, was when Nick opened his desk and scorpions, that's right, scorpions, swarmed out and ran up his arms. His arms. Ooh. I don't want that. Do you know the answer, Max? Mr. Malone asked at one point. Max had been so busy imagining a snake crawling up Nick's leg that he hadn't heard the question. He shook his head. No daydreaming, Mr. Malone said. Max hated the word daydreaming. His father, there's the pictures. There's the dragon. There's the dog. There's King. There's Max sitting at his desk. And there's, is it Bol Burger? Nick Burger. His dad used to use it a lot. Daydreaming will never get you anywhere. He would say, you need to pay attention. Mr. Malone said, Max nodded. 
He tried to pay attention after that, but it was hard to care when the farm products, care about the farm products of Mexico. Pretty soon, he was imagining Luis or Louis and Rocco turning on Nick on the playground. They pulled his pants down. Under his pants, Nick was wearing pull-up diapers like the ones Max's sister Polly used to wear with pink flowers. All the other third graders stood around Nick and laughed until he got loose from his henchman and ran away. As he ran, Nick's face was redder than his buzz cut. At lunchtime, Max was by himself, or he sat, he was by himself, he sat by himself, keeping an eye on Nick and his henchmen. Thanks to them, he had nothing to eat. But that didn't mean they'd won. He imagined himself eating his favorite pizza. It had pepperoni and sausage with mushrooms and extra cheese. When he took a bite, the cheese made long yellow strings that Max had to catch with his fingers. He shared the pizza with King, who wagged his tail with appreciation and licked Max's hand. Afterward, he imagined himself eating a huge butterscotch brownie and drinking a glass of ice-cold milk. Yum. He didn't share these with King brownies and milk weren't good food for dogs. When his stomach rumbled that afternoon, he ignored it. He told himself that he and King were spies in a school full of space aliens. It was a school that was teaching the aliens how to conquer Earth. He had to find out what they were learning so the governments of Earth could stop them. Hmm. He was disguised to look just like aliens, just like the aliens, but their food was poisonous to humans. He dared not put a single bite in, of it into his mouth. A good spy didn't let hunger bother him. The future of Earth depended on him. And next time, so Mother said that evening will be chapter two. And there he is in his window. All right, so we'll read that chapter two real soon. I'll probably post that tomorrow, chapter two. You'll see chapter one today. Or whatever day it ends up being. <laughs> Little House in the Prairie, chapter two is coming soon. If you like the chapter books, look for A Little House on the Prairie and soon The Secret Garden. And hopefully, real soon, The Secret of Nim. It's about rats that can read. I think that'll be cool. So, I hope you'll enjoy these new stories that are coming up and stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Remember to read more in 2024 and grow your brain. It's time to say bye-bye. Bye-bye.